Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I waited, waited for the Lord who bent down and heard my cry, drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, set my feet upon rock, steadied my steps. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us 
us pray. Heavenly Father, you redeemed us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant that we may benefit from the graces merited by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Alleluia. Lord, I am your servant, the child of your maid servant. You have loosed my bonds. Alleluia. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands and in the midst of the lampstands, one like the son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the nether world. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, John. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You kept me from going down to the pit. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, 
Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins are for you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. During the liturgy, a procession took place in this consecrated church. Three times, we went around the interior of the church. And the three times, which is a blessed number, we stopped at the four corners and we proclaimed the resurrection of our Lord. Now a week later, we start to talk about some of the appearances that took place following the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This past week, during Holy Mass, we read about some of those appearances that took place. You know, that first evening, the disciples had gathered. Their hopes were dashed. They had seen, John especially had seen, the crucifixion of the Lord. 
And so, out of their fear of having the same sentence passed on to them, they did. But that evening, after the resurrection, there were still those who had the doubts. Even though Mary had run to Peter and to John and told them that she had seen the Lord. But like most of us, something like the resurrection from the dead was not something that took place every day. And so I'm sure many of them doubted. But while the doors were locked, Jesus came in their midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. Would there be any other greeting that the Lord would bring to those for whom he loved? He wanted to bring them a peace. A peace that was a forgiving peace. A peace that was a loving peace. You know, as I wrote, today's story is so important because it, it highlights the essence of our Christian faith. Why are we Christians? Was it because of Christmas? You see, Easter was the fulfillment of Christmas. The Savior who was prophesied came into the world, and for a short period of time, he taught the universal truths. But Easter was the culmination of his ministry, also contained in the Old Testament. And so, they must have been startled when they saw the Lord. In today's Gospel we read that the Lord said unto them a second time, Peace be unto you. As the Father hath sent me, so I send you. This was the confirmation of their ministry. It is the confirmation of our ministry. The Lord comes to each of us with that simple phrase, Peace be unto you. But he also gives the directives that as the Father has sent me, Jesus says, so I send you. And we all call upon, as we read in the letter of Peter, that we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are called upon to share that joy of the resurrection of our Lord. It is an event that all Christians must be elated with. For in the resurrection of the Lord is our own salvation. The Lord, prior to his ascension, which took place 40 days, after his resurrection, he gave them the commission to go out into the world, preach, and baptize. And my brothers and sisters, we are, as what has been referenced, a community of priests, both men and women, who had been consecrated by our Lord to go out into the world and to preach the good news to preach the resurrection of the Lord. You know, we see one of the apostles, Thomas. They said, we have seen the Lord, and he said, no, I, I don't believe. You see, Thomas, metaphysically, represents the human intellect. How can any one of us wrap our heads around logically or intellectually and understand what the resurrection from the dead actually means. It is something that can only be perceived spiritually. That's why our blessed Lord, after coming and saying, Peace be unto you, what did he do? He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. You know, there are some denominations that believe that after the apostles lived, that there were no more miracles. This is a part of their faith, that the 
the miracles, and the witnessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ended with the lives of the apostles. I don't believe it. I believe that there are some who have actually experienced the Lord in their life. The risen one, the risen Lord, the Lord that says, because I live, you also will live. And it is not a life that after we pass, we are promised eternal life, but it is a living and a growing faith that we are called upon to share with others. You know, our Lord came back a week later when Thomas was with the rest of the apostles. And he said, take your hand, put it to the, to the spot where the nails were driven in. And if need be, put your hand to my side and be not unbelieving, but believe. My brothers and sisters, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is not just a fairy tale. It is not just a legend or, or for folklore, but it is, according to our faith, the event that is the quintessential of the Christian faith. And so, when Jesus said to Thomas, what more proof do you need? It was then that Thomas came to his confession of faith and his profession of faith and says, my Lord and my God. Well, you know, my brothers and sisters, intellectually, again, it is difficult to, for any of us to, to understand that great mystery of the resurrection of the Lord. We've been baptized into that faith. We've been taught that faith. And we are told by our blessed Lord to go into the world and to share the good news of his resurrection. The resurrection and the life that takes away our sins, which took place on the cross that first Good Friday. Now John, my brothers and sisters, was the last apostle and that he was actually exiled to the to the island of Patmos as we read today John was given up a, a very special vision in which he saw in this vision the future of what was to take place and he wrote at the end of his gospel he said now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples. There's also a place where it is written that if all the things that Jesus did were put into a book, the book would be endless. But he also gives us the assurance. But all these things have been written so that you may come to believe without the doubt that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it is that faith and that belief of which we've been baptized that we may come to know the living God within our life in the form of Jesus Christ, that we experience through our prayers, our devotions, and in the Holy Eucharist, and that through this belief, we may all have life in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia.
and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection he restored life to us. Therefore, we he join the day with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating, very humbly, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers today, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who are sick with the flu and also with pneumonia. And we pray for those who are suffering from the COVID coronavirus. Let us pray for their health and for the wellness of their families. In our prayers, let us be thankful for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders and all health care workers. In our deepest prayers, let us remember the people of Ukraine, especially the women and the children. May we also pray for all abuse and neglected children in our world, as well as all abuse and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us, in our prayers, pray for all our men and women who serve in the armed forces and pray for their protection. And let us pray for all here present and their families whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering, that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries 
in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. For these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merit and eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and then following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy
us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same. Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, oh, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May they at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, at this time, for those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist, sacramentally, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, to you belong the keys of life and death by the will of the Father. Preserve us through these holy mysteries that our redemption 
may be assured and our doubts really for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Though the sacrifice has been offered, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, the light was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant. 